That's right, it is a very special after school special all about Sony Entertainment. So, Tell us uh, more, Mr. Reagan. <laughs> so, uh, yep, it is a uh, special episode where we're talking about Sony because there's just a lot to talk about with Sony over the past few years, uh, specifically what we've heard the past couple of weeks. I'm Jason Amherst, and of course, I am joined by. Oh, I'm introducing you, myself. You yeah. asked for dead air. We're giving you your dead air. <laughs> <laughs> we were following his instructions, people. <laughs> All right. Entering player one. I am Deej from Broken Caffeinated. Uh, I am making sure these guys are following the rules. I am the game master, Sammy Soundwave, from, well, anything you can find around with Broken Caffeinated or Super Fancom. Yep. And, uh... Well, as uh, you guys have probably heard countless times before, Jason Amherst, Crit Hit Jace, literally freaking everywhere of Critical Hit Productions. Um, also known as President Reagan. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, President President Reagan, back from the dead, to talk to you about video games. We like to resurrect him every few months, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, <laughs> we got a machine. We just bring everybody back from the dead every so often for shits and giggles. I mean, just the other day we had Casey Kasem uh, just chilling here in the studio here in uh, Cellar Dweller Studios in Unstable Mass. I still don't know why you guys won't let me go to, like, you know, other countries to get these dead people. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of dead things... Um, so uh, we're gonna <laughs> nice we're gonna segue. drag uh, we're gonna drag some stuff back up from the dead uh, to talk about briefly uh, because this episode, as I said, was all about Sony. Um, so within the past few years, Sony has been doing a lot of controversial stuff. They've been really getting onto gamers' bad sides, and not in your big third party AAA microtransaction bullshit because Sony actually gives a shit about single player games. We've seen it with Horizon Zero Dawn, Last of Us, Spider-Man, God of War. Like Sony actually has given us what we want. Uh-huh. Except for a few things. Um one, crossplay. So this this was where the Reagan voice came in was uh uh joking around earlier. So uh, Sony PlayStation tear down this wall. So uh, they, they were so strictly against crossplay for some bizarre reason, thinking like, oh, people won't buy a PlayStation to play these games if there's crossplay. So what happened? Nintendo and uh, Microsoft decided to th- throw massive shade at Sony in the best crossover since insert comic book crossover here. <laughs> okay, hold on. I've got this one. Um, uh, Silver Surfer teamed up with um, Bugs Bunny against uh, Darkseid. Damn. That would Man. be a good crossover, right? That would be. That would be a good crossover. I got the better one. Silver Surfer teamed up with Hank Hill to talk about propane, propane accessories on Fox years ago. Oh, shit. Ugh. I said- swear to God, that was a real thing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, really? pause, pr- press pause and go and look this up. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I will, I will find a link to it. It was for like Fox Kids years ago. I can imagine that Hank actually. Souped, Hank Hill souped up Silver Surfer's little board with a propane tank, you know, powered engine, and everything it was amazing. So, and you know what the worst part is? I love it. Now the power cosmic is good, but have you ever heard about propane? No, tell me about this mighty power. Well, propane and propane accessories are very... I, I can't really do Hank Hill right now, but... Well, I'll tell uh, you what, that whoa. boy rocks. That boy Whoa! <laughs> anyway. Okay, Dad! Uh, yeah, so, crossplay. <laughs> crossplay. Sorry, we, we, we're having a lot of fun conversations before this, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> 
So crossplay, and... Sony seemed so strictly against it. I mean, like they they became the bane of everybody's existence. You could not enjoy, you know, your your Minecrafts or your Fortnites, you know, with your friends on other things if you're playing on a PlayStation. And Sony just kind of, you know, became like the the butt of everybody's joke over that, right? No, because of pettiness, though, I heard a rumor like Sony tried to do this a long time ago at Microsoft for another game, and then Microsoft didn't want to play ball, so now Sony in a petty like schoolyard kind of way they just said ah no we're not going to do it either fuck you i mean it seems like it could be petty but at the same time there was an actual quote from somebody over this saying that it had to do with sony's specific catered playstation experience or something (laughs) okay so uh i spent three years working in uh yeah seriously (laughs) but to shed a little bit of light on this um i spent three years working in um, retail for selling video games. I worked at a GameStop, essentially. I'm sorry. Uh, horror sto- yeah, horror stories <laughs> coming soon. Um, but the so let's take a look at when um, the PlayStation 3 was still the biggest thing and the PS4 had not been announced, all right? Um, PlayStation 3, you never had to pay for your online interaction. It was free, 100% free. Yep. That comes with a and now I'm not saying this is the key issue. I'm just throwing this out there as this may have been one of their key problems beforehand. Um so they were very interested in doing crossplay, but one of the things that did worry them was because of that whole free, you know, interaction with people on um PlayStation Network, who remembers the great Sony hack? Oh, I do. Oh, of the two yep. Th- of the, who yeah. does remember the that great was, Sony? That was, uh, that was back in the PSP days on top of it all, too. Yeah. So of the early 2000s, there was the great Sony hack. Brief summary for those of you who may not have heard about it. I, you know, because there are people who have never heard of it. Um, Sony had a massive hack on their servers, causing pretty much 90% of everybody's information who had a PlayStation 3 to be you know, sent out into the internet void. Class action lawsuits, there was compensation. You got, like, a few free games out of it. That was all, you know, it was, it was kind of bullshit, yeah, it was, really. It, this right. Was all because of a, this was all because of a Seth Rogen movie. That's what makes me laugh. No, this was before that No, this that was one. before no, that, was, actually. No, was, no wasn't, yeah, that, the great, wasn't that the, part of it, though? No, that no. was the second was time. That was the second time that, that was, Sony was better prepared. And that was that was actually, that was Sony Entertainment, Sony Pictures, uh, yeah. SPE, not uh, SCE, Sony Computer Entertainment. Oh, so yeah. Sony got hacked twice then. Yeah. This was, this was right. separate. Okay, okay. Yeah. My so, apologies, folks. Yeah, no, no problem, man. No problem. It, learning experience all around. So in that time frame... As Jace alluded to, there was lawsuits out the wazoo, and this stuff continued onwards, and it was actually considered baggage on the PlayStation 4, because people were wondering, what are you going to do about this? How much more secure is this going to be? And then when the Xbox One was launched, Sony had that brief window where they claimed the, uh, that, the new generation console wars. When that new console war started... Sony saw that window and claimed it. And so the hype built up around them was getting bigger. They managed to, they didn't sweep it under the rug, but they managed to build back their positivity from those hacks. And so then what occurred is they started charging more for um, their online experience, which to me makes perfect sense, you know, but in some way, and I'm not 100% sure, leave a comment if you actually know about this. Um, This was how it was explained to me, was that the money was that because Sony at one point, they didn't need to charge for the service. And so now that they were charging, that money was going into building their security for the PlayStation 4, like, you know, from hack breaches and all of that. So henceforth, why, you know, if you, you know, a year or two later, it went up in price, blah, 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 blah. But so... And then came, does anyone remember the Microsoft hack? Uh, not entirely. Long story short, there was a massive hack at Microsoft. Microsoft's um, programs, because Microsoft was a computer company first, managed to stop that. But um, 
still around the time it was, you know, anytime you hear a system getting hacked or something, it's going to shine some negative light on anybody. You know, I'm not going to say, you know, it's Sony or Microsoft's fault, um, because at this point, if these companies can't get their shit together, then who cares, right? <laughs> Nintendo, please get your shit together. <laughs> You're not even worth hacking, apparently. (laughs) Well, well, consider this. Consider this. If we're going by computer models, Microsoft is Microsoft. Sony would kind of be Dell. And Mm. Nintendo would be Apple. Why would you hack an Apple? There's no (laughs) real point to hacking an Apple. Mainly that's because of technical limitations or technical things and all that. So I make a joke. Um, I'm not a big computer nerd. I just know these simple things. You know, apples were meant to be simple running computers. It's a, it's a reasonable, uh, comparison though. Yeah. Um, except Nintendo doesn't charge so much for the next big console. (laughs) But they will try to get you to buy five of them. I mean, uh, but that's another story entirely for another, uh, press box Five? I've got 12. (laughs) (laughs) But, so... uh... To wrap up story time here, essentially what I think the other problem was, was that, again, Sony by this point had, you know, they didn't want to let their, uh, Microsoft was playing the uh, card of, well, you guys got a major hack. We don't want to have crossplay put into there. And at the same time, you would think, okay, Microsoft, you guys have never had a hack. Crossplay would make more sense if you guys were in charge of the uh, software and in charge of the programming. I mean, because I guess I, uh, I guess that also explains why uh, Sony has invested, I guess, into Microsoft's uh, xCloud process. Uh, yeah. For uh, Sony wanting to do this, the, what the next generation is trying to do, this game streaming thing that has blown up in in uh, freaking Google's face. Mm-hmm. Oh man, they are eating shit, and it is lovely. Uh, <laughs> uh, I do have to ask: Have either one of you seen the Stadia commercials with Reggie Watts? Yeah, they you know, in general, giant they are drug-induced yeah. fever dreams. I mean, and they are amazing. Facebook's Oculus commercials are pretty good fever dream too, with Eric Wareheim. But yeah, Stadia Stadia's just are really weirder. scares you. I, I swear that they were probably produced by the same people who came up with the weird Sony ones, like the PlayStation uh, portable one that had the squirrels. Hey, what are you doing? I'm playing nut. You know you can play nut outside. What? <laughs> um, or the weird baby for the PlayStation Three. Oh God, yeah, that was weird too. That, again, different topic of conversation, but that's that's my slight insight. I think it then turned into, you know, you know, we've been wanting to do cross play for a while. Why we're extending our hand? You can actually prove to us why the, you guys have the better programming or something. I'm not going to, you know, officially state anything. These are just the ideas, everything that I gained from my time in. Uh, GameStop and talking to people. It definitely makes some sense. Uh, what didn't make sense was them talking about the curated experience because it threw fuel on the fire of another controversy that had hit within the past year and a half or so. Sony censoring games. Uh, which is a great laugh, actually, because like you have things that were cross-platform, like Devil May Cry 5, where scenes on the PlayStation 5 got patched. Uh, and Four. And... Uh, they weren't in freaking, like, they weren't patched on the uh, Xbox for, like, beams of light covering, like, body parts on, on one of the female characters and, like... Yeah. Then, like, to get even more obvious with it, we, we get into the blatantly... Because, like, Devil May Cry is the mainstream thing. Uh, for, for the otaku and the weebs out there, uh, just Japanese games in general are coming out on the Switch uncensored you know like or or as uncensored as possible without being straight up an h game you know uh <laughs> where i mean like nintendo published nekopara on the freaking switch uh e-shop for crying out loud and that that game was actually taken what not taken down but that that game reserved some flack but nothing happened yeah you know i mean like granted you can get you can pay extra and get that 18 plus version on steam but I mean, this—the fact that Nintendo has that, and the fact that Nintendo's uh, uh, great one, Senran Kagura. That's a great mainstreamish oh, example. God, yeah. Love that game. It's appearing uncensored, uncut on Switch. 
but getting edited and and toned down on Sony. So Sony's talking about this curated experience why they don't want to, you know, disrupt the Sony ecosystem. But now they're also censoring Japanese games. So Sony's coming into a, under, under a lot of fire for stuff like that. You know, so I mean, shit just keeps kind of hitting them bit by bit. We get this new generation coming out. We want to know more, right? We want to know more. So what happens? Sony pulls out from E3. I mean, I can't blame them for doing that after the really, E3 really... It's become a sh song and dance, let's be fair. I mean, it's always been a song and dance, but it's no longer a televised song and dance anymore because the it's internet... it's not enjoyable. And, um, uh, well, I can tell you, after covering last year, it was a hell of a slog. It was a fun slog. Probably would have been more fun if I was actually doing the, you know, shuffle from venue to venue and, you know, the hype of being there. But, I mean, just... In general, like, E3 is not what it used to be, but Sony's last E3 showing was so bad with its PlayStation experience and walking people from venue to venue and, like, we are here in the church and, like, and then they show off that and then it's like, and they now we're going to... They literally curated the, an experience. You mm -hmm. know, like, it, it was so out there. You know, and everybody just panned it. It was like, this was absolutely stupid. What the hell were you thinking, Sony? You can't just do a press conference. Uh, and shortly after that, they're like, oh, okay, we're going to copy you guys now. You know, you got uh, uh, X01 and you got uh, you got Nintendo Direct. State of play! That's what we're going to do now. Like, but So they're skipping E3, and now suddenly they pull out a GDC and PAX East claiming uh, fear over... And I know we're not monetized on YouTube, but I'm going to say CV. I'm not going to name it. The, the virus outright, mm -hmm. but because, oh, of yeah, yeah, yeah. because of the threat of that, they pull themselves from that. And so here's here's the here's what I'm really segueing into because you you were mentioning retail and, and pricing and stuff. The PlayStation Five, we still don't know shit about it. We got some specs, we've never seen a picture of it. We got a logo, which revolutionary. They changed the four from a, to a five, and that's take, it. Take all my money. I know, right? <laughs> no release date, no price, and the scary part is, because there's no price yet for the Xbox Sex yet. I mean, Series X. Series X. <laughs> no, no, it <laughs> doesn't matter. What? You Better, don't know it, about this? This is Xbox it X. It's, it's my sex box, and her name is Sony. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, uh, I mean, we don't have Can a we date. Can we back that up for a second? I'm sorry. Xbox needs to get someone who actually knows how to name this shit. <laughs> Xbox? Xbox? No, Xbox 360. Ooh, ooh. So we go from a, a box to a sphere. I like no, it. No, it's still a box. Oh. Then why is it the 360? Because you can have a r group of people. Oh, oh, I get it. The 360 experience. All-encompassing. Okay, yeah, now that you've explained it, it makes a lot of sense. You know what? That naming is about as smart as Nintendo and the Wii U. If you have to explain it, it's a bad name. Yeah, it really is. So, with Wii, we want everybody to play. With no, Wii U... No, Wii would like to play. So, but with Wii U, you can play by yourself. As well, what? I couldn't. I couldn't do that before on the Wii. Japan, stop being quirky. We love you for being well, quirky, but don't be quirky with your names. <laughs> well, you know what? And God rest his. God rest him. Um, who was the uh, president Satoru at Iwata. the time? Yes, yeah, Tori Iwata. Iwata. You know, like may he rest in peace and all that. Um, he definitely took the blame of that, and he oh, shouldered yeah. that. Oh yeah, so, no. you know, like he he is a model for all CEOs to follow, in my opinion. But oh yeah, if but, something goes wrong, you take responsibility and you move on. So what we've heard from estimates is that the PlayStation Five, the cost of parts alone for the system, are going to be four hundred fifty dollars. Okay, so throwing this out there. Um, we know that, so one of the major things, again, have to come from the retail angle on this, that came out of the previous console wars between the four and the one was that, was price. The yep. one was slated at $500. Yep. 
And I'm going to be 100% honest with you. I saw more returns of the one and switches over to the four within the first few months of the release because the one was not doing well. It was glitching. It was bricking. It was just not doing well. And this was kind of a repeat, but the opposite way around from the previous generation with the 360 and the three, where the three, which launched a year later than the 360, also launched at like $100 more and Mm -hmm. did horribly as a result. So price is a big factor with these systems. Um, The other thing, though, that you have to look at here and I'm not, I'm going to play devil's advocate. We have Sony pulling out of all these events. All right. Yep. Let's take away the cross play. Let's take away everything for the moment and just look at the five itself. All right. Yep. They are not bringing this to a con. They are not advertising this. What that says to me is that they, they know the five is not ready. The planning is done, but the five is not yet ready. I'm going to, because as, um, uh, why is his name escaping me? Right. Shigeru Miyamoto says, yep. A delayed game will all, a delayed game means that the game will be good because they have longer to work on it, but a bad game is bad forever. Yeah. And that is true. I mean, uh, last of us two is getting delayed. Uh, we still haven't gotten anything out of that, and people are getting anxious about it. They were hoping that PAX East was going to be a big reveal. Um, I mean, I, it sounds it sounds to a lot of people, what, what it sounds like now is that they're using CV as an excuse to kind of no-show it, because the idea was that apparently they're going to do their own events, which sounds like they're going to try to take the system on tour, Kind of like what Nintendo does when they do these, like, you know, Best Buy events and stuff like that with uh, with their systems and their games. It sounds like Sony's trying to do something similar, but it also, like, seems like you, you said they aren't ready with it, so they're delaying it. But they're using a convenient excuse for the time in order to do that. Right, they're not... And, it, again, this is all speculation, but I would rather... And like, but we still know nothing about this system. Yeah. Except for what the grouping of the parts might be. Yeah, you know, like four hundred and fifty dollars. That's still a rumor. That is not confirmed hard facts. It's it's fairly. I want to say like the accuracy has been up there around like ninety percent from what people have reported to that cost. That has been the big issue with why they have yet to announce a price point. Or even show off the system, I guess, is just due to manufacturing. So they have yet to actually have it finalized to try to get it to... I, I think they're trying to get the price point sub $400. So they're trying to get it to 400 and maybe if they they can push it, maybe 375 which is an odd number. But um, from my limited knowledge of gaming retail um i only know from what i know when my mother used to work for toys r us um but game consoles are sold at a loss traditionally for these companies they make their money back on uh game sales traditionally Mm -hmm. um so the cost of manufacturing is always going to be more than what they sell it for Mm -hmm. um at the same time we also have to look at within the past few generations, just looking, say, from PlayStation 2 to 3 to 4, the size of these libraries. PlayStation 2 had the largest library of any video game system ever. Mm-hmm. You know, and I mean, like, and granted, that's an outlier, but you look at the other systems of those generations, too. I mean, well, actually, the next generation, then the Wii had the largest one, but that's mostly because it was shovelware. But that's aside from the point. So you look at the library sizes, and the library sizes have shrunk because the developers... We don't really have any B-tier developers anymore, or publishers. We don't really have C-tier. Those people have shifted more to digital, and the AAA developers, you know, uh, your, your EAs don't have and Activisions... It's, it's not even that they don't have a, a competition. They've moved to this online always, this live service thing that, uh, you know... Uh, Jim Sterling live services so like it really does drag down the number of games that are out because people want 
if, if, if you have a big library of games, you go out, you're constantly buying and trading and all that stuff. But if you're only putting out one game and expecting people to dump hundreds of hours into that one game because of the online content, and then maybe you put a new version out the next year, maybe you don't put out a new one for two years. I mean, are people going to go out and keep buying games? What's the size of that system's library going to look like? PlayStation 4 yeah. started with mostly ports of PlayStation 3 titles. Which is I don't fine. think I don't think the PlayStation 5 has much in the tank yet. I don't think it's I, ready at all. A lot. Yeah, I've been talking a lot. Deej, what's your view on this? The v I'm, cause, well, I'm thinking a lot about this. Uh, <clears throat> I know that they're going to try and want to keep the prices down. Like, this is not the first time Sony tried to come out with a system that was stupidly expensive. Remember when the PS3 was for $600? Yep. Oh, I that's, that's what I imagine. I imagine this is what I imagine is going to happen. I'm what they're going for, and if the specs are again, these are if the rumors are true. We're going by these rumors. If the spe if we're going by the specs and what they're trying to do, I imagine it won't be far off from being like four hundred, four hundred fifty dollars. It'll be out there. I'm sure it's going to sell, but then because of its high price, it, it'll drop it to like let's say three hundred dollars, three hundred fifty, or maybe. Because usually what happens is this is why I try to hold myself off from buying the first generation console because they always come out with like a second newer model. It's like, revision, oh, yeah. this is this. Yeah, they, they always make a revised version of it. I learned that with the PS2. I learned that with the PS3, especially when it went from a big bulky bastard to this tiny little thing that had yeah, you, more. You had the Foreman there... grill and then you had the slim and then you have the what I call the super slim model of it. Yeah. Exactly. So that's why I try to like hold off from buying stuff like certain stuff, especially yeah. fighting games day one. I've oh, learned God. that I've learned that the hard way as a gamer. Oh, yeah. I generally the... hold off for game of the year editions uh, most of the time. Yeah, I but mean, never but... do that with a Capcom fighting game. Never do that with a Capcom fighting game. Let's be fair. <laughs> what, you, no, what, wait, what, waiting? <laughs> no, no, no. Waiting for the game of the year edition because the following year they're not going to make another one. They're just going to update that game of the year edition at least three times. <laughs> I mean, I, it could be worse than never... that. It could be. Uh, it could be what uh, Koi Tecmo does with Dead or Alive. You know, five hundred dollars worth of DLC. Uh... And no, and no game of the year edition on top of it all. Well, yeah, because who wants to shell out at least 600 bucks for Game of the Year edition with $500 worth of content? Yeah, which are all well, costumes. I'm, I'm personally going to wait to buy the PS5. PS5 could be coming out next week. I'm, I wouldn't buy it now just because I'm going to want to wait. I'm going to wait for any revisions. I'm going to wait to see if there's any bugs. Like I've been pretty lucky with day one consoles because I remember when the Wii came out, there were reported bugs. When the Switch came out, I was lucky because apparently there were multiple like reports of the switch breaking the joy cons, but well, my joy cons did end up breaking. I had to get new ones. Uh, I'm still dreading joy con drift, but that's why I I'm now we're unfortunately at the point now. It's like, I don't want to buy something day one because now mm -hmm. I'm so used to like, Oh, this thing's breaking. That's why I'm going to wait for them to, or even if the PS five doesn't break, they're going to make a revised version. So that's and why I'm waiting. The problem with that revised version is that that is not going to be the next version of that console. And this is another thing that I've learned. So the PlayStation 4 actually went through about maybe – no, I, I can say this a little bit more certainly. At least with the Xbox One, went through three versions. So there was the Xbox One, the Day One Edition, I'm going to label it, because there was that Day One Edition themed one and all of that. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that batch, along with all those consoles, um, kept um, breaking. Damn. Then, a few weeks later, or at least a month or so later, came the second iteration of the Xbox One. That one had the better fan in the cooling system. That one didn't break. It, it, if it did, it was rare, but that was the better Xbox One. And that's the one that kind of carried the rest through um, until the Xbox S. You know, they made minor tweaks here and there to it, but it wasn't anything that you would notice big time. 
between that one and the day one edition, yes, there was some, it was amazing how much better it was. Um, and then, you know, just at the more that they released, they tweaked it slightly, slightly, slightly. Then the Xbox one S came out and then, so with PlayStation, it, they did minor tweaks to the PlayStation four, but it was mainly the pro. That was the first time you actually knew more about the updates to the PlayStation console. It's, it's interesting too, because it depends on the manufacturer to how much they make those tweaks, uh, obvious. Because, like, I think uh, if you look back on it, the PlayStation 3, the Form and Grill Edition, or Spider-Man Edition, if you will, because the uh, font they used, uh, that uh, that PlayStation 3 was backwards compatible, and they still used that same PlayStation 3, but maybe about two versions into it after that, they were no longer backwards compatible to the 2, because they didn't want to put that extra chip in there anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and so... There are a number of first-generation PlayStation 3s that are not backwards compatible. Um, and then it goes through the revision to the Slim and then the Super Slim. Uh, Nintendo has a long history of revisions, mostly with their handhelds. Um, I mean, because, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Color Advance. Well, because uh, Game Boy Pocket and Color was really just a revision system. Advance yeah. was the first full-on upgrade. But yeah, if you really want to look SP, at it... Yeah, the like you had SP, Advance, I think be the Advance one. SP, and then finally the Micro, you know, which well, you I mean, don't really to the to that. the SP to the Advance SP's credit, they made it more portable, and they involved a backlight. I I didn't like the profile because my big thumbs kind of could <laughs> not handle the square little thing. He's giving it a thumbs down, just so you all know. <laughs> <laughs> Going like, uh, 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 to, but like, uh, and then of course we have the DS. DS Lite, DSi, uh, we have the 3DS, uh, 3DS XL, 2DS, new 3DS, and new 3DS XL, and then 2DS XL. <laughs> so, I mean, we have a very clear progression, but we even saw redesigns as far back as the NES with, you had the original model, then the model uh, that had AV inputs in the side, and then the third and final revision uh, back the around... The SNES. I, no, actually, while the SNES was out, there was a final revision, and that was the top loader, uh, NES. Right. So, right. I mean, revisions are no old, like no new thing to systems, uh, but the only thing that will get me to go out day one and get a PS5 is if they say that bitch is backwards compatible all the way down to the one. Now, let's hit that rumor, yeah, because I agree. that is one of the bigger rumors that we have heard. Yeah. It's backwards. And, so like PS4? No, not just PS4. No, PS4, all the way one, down to the one. Three, four. Oh, damn. If the rumor is to be believed, one, this will two, be Sony's three, four, last console permanently because they are going to make sure that you can play anything that they've made on it. Yep. Which, of course, then makes that idea that the push will continue to move towards digital, digital streaming, and that's it. And, I mean, you can make larger formats. I mean, they do have uh, 4K Blu-rays. They can make larger optical discs. Um, okay, let's get the discs out of the way. The Switch proved that cartridges can come back. I mean, yeah. the problem that we're having with the Switch is the so-called Switch tax. The fact that these cartridges do cost more than a disc to make, and there is a cost to them. The largest size they go up to currently is 32 gigabytes, uh, which means extra development time being put into file optimization, uh, as well as, of course, taking into effect that Switch is not as powerful as a PlayStation 4 or Xbox One, obviously. Right. Um, well, but then you have the, the studios. The Witcher game on those things. You have yeah. The Witcher, and you have The Outer Worlds, two huge, very graphi graphically intense games. So graphically intense, I can't say graphically correctly. <laughs> glaphically. Uh, glaphically. Uh, intense games. No, they just crammed them. It, is. It, it created a new word. It's called glaphic, people. Glaphic. We call it glaphic. <laughs> Glaphics. <laughs> so, uh, I, watch, I watch glaphically intensive games while, while wearing glaphes. <laughs> you need <laughs> these glaphes to enjoy every pixel that the glaphics have. But... Uh, just yeah, basically, th th these, these these cartridges go up to 32 gigs right now, and a good studio can use that size appropriately, 
and they know they're going to make the sales to compensate for that cartridge. Meanwhile, you have other studios like Capcom who are just lazy, buy a cheaper, smaller cartridge, and then force you to download the other half of the game. Or, and here's the good part, we're trying to be so eco-friendly nowadays, we skimp on product packaging all the time. We use nothing but the thinnest, least amount of plastic to make our game packages nowadays. Yet, despite being so eco-friendly, we have publishers such as Bethesda and uh, Blizzard who will put out a game in an empty box with a piece of paper inside it. Okay, to, to make a point here, though, I'm just going to push this point. Let's not talk about Blizzard. Let us not go down the road with Blizzard. Well, I mean, Can we it, all agree. <laughs> <laughs> Overwatch is digital only on the Switch. You go out, you buy it, you get a box with a piece of paper yeah, no, in it. No, I completely. Wolfenstein get Youngblood, which of course is Bethesda. You know, I mean, same deal. Company that was high up on a pedestal, fallen far from grace. You know. Yeah, but that started back with Fallout seventy six. So that's why I'm saying let's not. You know, Bethesda, we can take pot shots at, but let's not even bring <laughs> Blizzard to the table because, by comparison, Bethesda may have screwed so many people over, but they at least did it to our faces. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> that's true. They too. at least had the gonads to do it to our face, screw us over in front of us. <laughs> so I mean. uh I mean, the, the, the big thing that scares me, of course, is price point, because retail is such a fragile thing nowadays with this economy. Like, to, to sound scary and adult right now, like, people don't go out and spend. I'm a freaking streamer, for crying out loud, and I hardly go out and spend money on games. And I'm, like, behind by, like, seven games in my Nintendo catalog. Like, I, like I, that is a hell of a freaking money sink right man. there. I, as a retail worker, I can vouch, people don't want to go out and buy anything. Yeah, and when they do, you know, they normally think. And sidebar, may I please rant just one second about this. Uh, they will have gone to like say um, a Gucci store, pay seven hundred dollars for an item, then come into my store and complain about a sixty dollar price point. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's not everybody. Just wanted to get that out there. So, just to point out the fact is like people will buy stuff. They'll just buy stuff that is not necessary and when it's something that's necessary they will complain about its price yeah but then again yeah. that's human nature we drop money on a dime for things that we like that is true too i i am poor because of many impulse buys but that's aside from the point uh speaking of poor and needing to pay the bills <laughs> <laughs> speaking of poor and needing to pay the bills super <laughs> fancom needs to pay the bills too we're going to take a brief break right here for uh, some uh, sponsors and when we get back we are going to come to the meat and potatoes of the conversation the reason we are here today our after school special on pay to win patents oh boy this is gonna be a hell of a ride stay tuned hey everyone it's retro rick here um don't for the ad break i hope everyone's enjoying the show uh thank you for listening to Jace, Sam, and Deej talk about Sony and video games. Um, and if you'd, like, uh, if you'd like to help our show look and sound better, try any of our links, like jlist.com, where we're using our code to get you 5% off your order from stuff in Japan. Humble Bundle, where you can get tons of great video games sent to you. The Green Tea House, home of all natural herbal and exotic teas. Buy things from another world, home of DC, Marvel, and Image Comics, pop figures, and action figures. And by the Kawaii Box, where you can get a box sent to your house each month from Japan filled with cool stuff like plushies, keychains, phone charms, and more. Or if you just want to help our show, go to our Patreon at patreon.com backslash show. All for donating $1, you get full uncut episodes. Also, we have a coffee page on PayPal. If you just want to donate to help us get better. Now I unpause you from a pause break on press pause and return you to the show. Thank you. Good night. All right. And we have unpaused from our commercial break. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for checking out uh, those awesome people who help us out. And uh, now we're going to help you out by ranting about 
this big hot button topic right now. The stupidest thing to come along since Nintendo asking if you want a hand after you died five times on that level. Even though you knew you could do it, you were just really fucking tired at the time. So, I'm just talking from personal experience. But, uh, Sony put out a patent where you could pay to have the game play itself for you. I believe is is that how the patent went? No, the the patent how it works is you get stuck if you're stuck you, if you can't beat a boss you the supposedly I guess it's with voice activation you go like Sony how do I beat this boss and then the the computer is gonna give you a whole list of oh this is how players beat him or you need to go get this item to beat the boss and basically it's trying to give it's trying to give you a helping hand. To try and beat this game, to try and beat this game, which I wouldn't care so much about, but the main reason it, like, you know, just kind of hit me the wrong way is because you have to pay for this. You have to pay to you get these tips, and in my mind, I'm thinking like, what happened to using YouTube if you're stuck somewhere? Uh, not advertiser friendly. Uh, somebody fell into a time warp and uh, suddenly thought it would be a good idea to computerize a one nine hundred number. Uh, Doc Brown uh, didn't get the DeLorean up to eighty eight miles per hour. Because like, and second of, uh, and the other thing is, my favorite is because supposedly I some one article had said to me had said like it's going to help beat the game for you. If you need something to beat a game for you, A, why are you playing the game in the first place? B, hand in your gamer card right now. <laughs> um, okay, so I have to play devil's advocate again. And this is something that the concept of this is something that I can So the concept, the key concept of this, I would like to first point out, we've been doing this for a long time. Deej, Jace, we both know this. Do you remember what they were called? Uh, let's see. There have been, uh, I mean, there were strategy guides. There were websites like GameFAQs that eventually made strategy guides obsolete. Uh, but like I was saying years before, you had, uh, you know, 1-800 or 1-900 numbers, like the Nintendo Power Line that you would call that would tell you how to get through stuff. You would call game mm -hmm. counselors who would tell you how to beat a level or where to find that secret. Right. So so in that regard, we've seen this before and money was spent before. Yeah. So in in this aspect. OK, I get that. If the game were to be able to play itself. There's only one reason why I'm approving of that. And this is it's a it's a difficult topic. Th this um, I want to hear. <laughs> OK. Disabilities, physical limitations and disabilities the key thing here is is that there were a lot of good people when i worked at gamestop who had disabilities and they wanted to come in and play a video game and you know what i that's great i don't care gaming is for everybody um and i never judge i never you know you never have a concern and there are some people who, because of the, their disabilities, cannot, you know, their motor function will not fu work properly or just something, and they will have trouble with that game, and they just will not be able to beat it. They come in, they trade it in for a measly amount because they weren't able to enjoy it because just of these limitations that they have no control over, you know, they cannot beat the game. If that function were to help people in that situation... That's the only way I would approve of that. Yeah, but I, I get what you're saying, but here's my counter argument. If it is something like that, I'm still against the fact that you would have to pay for it because at that point, it almost seems like Sony in some – I'm sure this is not what they're mean – they're open to do, but it seems like that they're, hope, that they're expecting, yeah, the disability can't play, so we're going to take as much money as we can from them so then they can supposedly play the game even though they're not playing the game. Because like with games like Nintendo and one of the Super Mario games, if you die a lot, Nintendo gives you for free like this white Takuni – uh, why can't I say the name? Tanuki. Uh, the, 
Thank you. It's a Danuki suit, like a white one, invincible, so you can fly, you can beat the stage. It's like, you know, it's if you die a certain amount of times, but it gives you the option. And so that I can understand. I know people like Mike Matei have argued again. I thought he was crazy. I've I've argued so, against but, it. I mean, because it annoys the hell out of me because, I mean, I could just be being in a rush and being sloppy. I, I mean, I'm an old school gamer. I've been playing this shit for my entire life. You know, I've been doing this for 30 years, you know, with a controller in my hand since a ColecoVision. And mm-hmm. it's like, well, I know what I'm doing. Okay, boomer. <laughs> so, uh, uh, um, dang old um, uh, Mario and Jumbo and the pins, you know, and, uh, getting Tanuki suit. And... <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, Thank you said you, boomer, boomer, not boom hour. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I can't get boom hour. Let's be good with that. <laughs> but, I Wait, mean, are like. Are secretly a ranger? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but basically, um, you know. They, they took it a step further, actually, in uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns, where you could actually watch the game autocomplete the level for you just to go to the next level. That was programmed into the game, so that's not something that I will show anger towards. You know, I mean, it was programmed into the game. It's frustrating because there's a part of you where, lately in my spare time, I've played a lot of uh, Shovel Knight. And, uh, ah. I, I got back game. So nice. I bought it thrice. I backed it on Kickstarter and then cut it two other times, mostly because I had the damn amiibo and I wanted it on my switch, but I demand uh, for Spectre night. <laughs> no, I had that shit on pre-order for like four years. I'm Doesn't glad I, I finally have it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you see this, you want it, you want it, you can't have it, but, um, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, like, the stuff that's built around these old-school concepts, you know, they've got that old-school level of difficulty to a degree because they're they're not new ideas in gaming. Everybody knows about run, jump, you know, jump over the pit, mm-hmm. hit the enemy. They're not new concepts. Now, boss fights, on the other hand, um, at least in an adventure game, like, I was playing uh, Jet Force Gemini the other night, and uh, it was this one boss... And unlike playing through a level where, say, you have uh, your first life and then what it said was two continues, so you had three lives to get through the level. But once you got to the boss, there were no more continues. You could die and repeat as many times as you wanted until you beat the boss, which was a great little bit thrown in there into the difficulty curve. Now, the boss had a tell, so I'm shooting blindly at this thing, you know, and then what I realized was eventually what it was attacking with would flash. And at that moment, that flash from what it was attacking with, you were supposed to attack what it was attacking with. And so it was one of those things where I died like at least 10 times before I caught on to that. I saw the blinking points on it, but I wasn't doing any kind of damage to it. And it took me a while, but eventually I got it. Now I feel like with a difficulty curve for a game... You know, it's it's hard to create that perfect curve. Mm-hmm. Everybody's got their own learning curve to it. You know, mm-hmm. and we're talking about a game that came out, I want to say, like, circa 99, 98, I think. Uh, but the fact that it didn't limit you to the number of lives you had while you were fighting it, so you mm-hmm. didn't get a game over screen, um, mm-hmm. and the tells were something that you could catch on to after a while. Like, when I pulled out the right weapon, the weapon would identify when I was aiming at something that was actually targetable and it would, the, the reticle would turn red showing me, Oh shoot here. So, okay. I'm shooting at what I think is the weak spot, but it's not turning red despite me shooting the weak spot. Oh, but the part of it that just fired, that's a weak spot turned red when I was over that. Oh, so I shoot at what it's firing with. Okay. So, right. It's kind of a, it's got that feedback loop, and you feel accomplished once you've done it. And so, I feel like uh, games can't be too quick to jump on you with a tutorial, in my opinion. They can't be too quick to grab you by the hand and lead you. It needs to be something optional that's not in your face about it, you know, and also not put it at a point where it's so, like, where there... I mean, they want to charge extra for this. Like, you know, right, I get right. that you can and do that back in the day, 
But you could also just go on YouTube and do the same thing. I mean, if they want to make it voice controlled in the game, who's to stop somebody from picking up their phone, <laughs> shouting, you know, hey, rural, because I don't want to turn on my phone right now. Or <laughs> and, anyone else. And, uh, you know, I'm not an asshole like that episode of South Park. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, I could just shout at my phone to look up that on YouTube and pull up a clip on YouTube on my phone without having to shout at my system and pay money to do it. So, I also feel yeah, like Yeah, but games... I mean, everyone loves the fact that you can j yell. Yeah, but let's go with a fun factor here for a second. Just a little bit. Who doesn't want to just yell at their TV and tell the boss to die and then just see the game kill the boss for you? <laughs> <laughs> Until you see the credit card bill because it accidentally charged you for it. Exactly, but either way, you know, let's go with that joke for a minute. I, I think that would be hilarious if it happened just once. Like, go, my girlfriend comes in and is like, DJ, did you spend this much it's on a fucking video game? You don't understand, hon. The Bloodborne boss was a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to be spending the day with our girl. I was. She yelled at him, too. My girlfriend just <laughs> goes, you fucking knew. Why did you use the ice blade? <laughs> oh, that was it. <laughs> so so let's get this out of the way, though. I'm not, you know, we're not against a game helping somebody. Games have been doing that since the very beginning. They've been it's helping the you try and learn. It's the exploiting and paying part that I'm yeah. that just yeah. kind of rubs me the wrong way. I mean, something like, you know. I mean, like I said, people with disabilities, if it helps make things easier for them, I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't want them paying for it. Shout outs to Microsoft. Uh, have you guys seen their uh, adaptability controllers? No, I haven't. Oh my god. Look it up. It is so cool. They make this wide range of inputs. Uh, all sorts of crazy different little tactile things. One of which even just looks straight up like a... Uh, we nunchuck um and the thing is is like some of them are as simple as like a freaking uh looks like a staples easy button you know but if it if it's somebody who does not have a full range of motion with their hands to hit buttons but they're able to say tap a button you know with a part of their body in order to do that same thing microsoft's adaptability controllers that are programmable for different things are absolutely mind-blowing props to microsoft for mm -hmm. truly designing a control system of gaming for people who can't use a controller like that right there is amazing okay. um sony is more i think adaptable in the fact of how they pl how you map out their controller into yeah. you know just just the controller like mapping out like what button do you want to do this this and this this you know so it's like um so you can just figure out which ones do that. Whereas Microsoft has made it easier to actually use the controller. Oh, you know I mean, I mean? let's so, face it. They made that first Xbox controller and it was a freaking hand sore. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Duke. Um, so they know something way, about having to make a better controller. The thing that was only made for like basketball players. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I still have mine and it still smells like it was fresh out of the box. Wow. I don't know what to think about that, whether it means you didn't use the controller or if that controller is just loaded with that many plastic chemicals. <laughs> Can we just say that that's the smell of nostalgia and move on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's I think it's the smell of something. Smell of something. Watching you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, the fact that uh, and tale as old as time gamers trying to find a way to beat a level that is impossible that is always going to happen but to take advantage of that and charge them for this that's downright absurd yeah no uh, i mean just because i died 20 times on a boss because mm -hmm. i couldn't get the rhythm down right or i wasn't using the right item doesn't mean that I want to spend money on that. And even then, like, I'm not a big fan of Souls games, which is why I don't play them. But I oh, mean, yeah. even then, if I were to play the game and get frustrated, I mean, I'd be the kind of person that, like, that would be a rental for me back in the day. You know, yeah. because that just doesn't, you know, work out for me. It's not that kind of thing. Others just, you know, like, other people love it. 
And I think it also comes down to not uh, every game is for every person. You can't make every game accessible. And I mean, now Nintendo, I see them try doing that with their little help systems in the in, in like Mario and Donkey Kong. But I also can understand that because their games are built almost less around the game to a degree nowadays, as much as they're about the experience in the characters, the legacy. Uh, it's it's like watching a cartoon at this point because you recognize the character so well. So I also feel that this whole playing it through for you works better in some instances than others. You yeah. Know? I mean, uh, you have to know what, what you're we... getting yourself into, basically, when yeah. it comes to the game. If you know you're not going to enjoy it, you know that it's not your cup of tea, I mean, then there just are plenty don't of... buy it. There are plenty of other ways to experience it. I am not against uh, watching Let's Plays on YouTube or even just looking up the cutscenes, you know, when it comes to a game. If you don't have the time to play a game, but you want to play it and you want to know the story, but you don't have that time to plop down 50 hours on an RPG, you know, or the game's not your cup of tea, like me in the Soul series. Like, I will watch plenty of videos about it, you know, and the mythology and all that stuff because it's cool. Oh, but yeah. I won't play it. Um, and for those people who are listening and are going to put in get good, yeah, no, completely understand that. It's just you can either get good or it, you ju you can't. Uh, uh, unfortunately, at that point, it's like, um, do you really want to put yourself through the stress and aggravation? Yes, it's rewarding at the end, but to do it again and again, you know, it's just, it doesn't turn into something, you know, it's not therapeutic. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, so ultimately, is the idea a good or bad idea? It's a gray area. That's where I stand on it. I feel like it's got to be implemented the right way. It shouldn't be built into the hardware for the game to have to be able to do it. If Sony wants to do it with their first party games, they got to do it in just the right way. And I really... I don't think they should charge for it. Agreed. You know, I, I think we're beyond I, that whole charge point. That's my only problem with it. Yeah. I, again, I mean, we, again, we're going back on, you know, and let's be fair here. Let's call this what it is. Finding out, you know, getting help on a video game. Let's call it what it is. It's gaming tradition. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, th this goes all the way back to schoolyards. You know, going, oh, did you know you could do this while playing a game? You know, except back in the day you had all those crazy rumors like, you know, oh, well, uh, my my dad's brother's best friend works at Nintendo and said that you could unlock blood in Mortal Kombat. You know, like, mm -hmm. the, the internet is this rich legacy of what started trolling. out on... <laughs> beyond trolling. It's, it's this, oh, yeah. at least gaming with the internet when it comes to tips and tricks and all that stuff it's got this rich legacy going back to the days of the schoolyard you know and, and oh, yeah. passing tips on with your friends and magazines and to a lesser extent phone lines because everybody had a phone let's face it we mentioned this when we were doing the commercial reviews with super fancom mm -hmm. uh Boglins had a freaking phone line. <laughs> so, I mean, everything had a phone line in the late 80s, early 90s. But people always had a way of getting their tips and, and their hits. People always had a way. I mean, if you had a family, like if you had siblings, you know, and you played games with it, you know, you had that older sibling who was better than you, you know, that was your person, That that was your YouTube video. You yeah. know, of how to beat something was you had an older sibling or an older friend who could do that. So actually, you know what? I just saw the best example of that. Um, the video game uh, episode or like mini sode in Futurama. Oh, he's down to the last ship. It's going really <laughs> yes. fast. How do you beat it? I don't know. My brother always did it for me. I am Lur from the planet Nintendo 64. <laughs> I remember the old days when I would be on the school bus and me and my friends, we would get together. We would try to, tr we would try to, you know, exchange gaming secrets. And then that this one kid, he was, he was, uh, in the fifth grade comes up to us. He goes, have you guys heard about missing? No. 
Oh my god. <laughs> that was how I first discovered missing number was And that's oh, how you man. first discovered how to destroy your entire game. Yeah. Yep. Well well, I glitched it beyond belief where I got infinite rare candies. Yep. <laughs> I, I yep. But but back on topic, sorry. Um, <laughs> but I mean it's just it's tradition. You know, yeah. why are you charging for tradition? Because uh, if they because find a way you... to squeeze money out of us, they will. That's the sad thing about gaming. It's it, you you said it best right there. The the gaming industry, like any entertainment industry, basically is is kind of predatory to a degree. Like not to sound like a total downer, but Hollywood is a predator on our nostalgia. Gaming also is, but when it comes down to it, with the microtransactions, loot boxes, DLCs, patches, all this other stuff, uh, right down to the fact that like the past few Final Fantasies haven't done as well as, say, the nostalgia for 7, which is why it took them, like, 10 years to make Final Fantasy 7 Remake. And it's Actually, only the there's first a few other it. reasons for that one. It's because mm-hmm. Nomura is a crazy person. Well, yeah, yeah, because Nomura works on, like, five projects at once. and The, the guy is a perfectionist, and it shows in his work. Mm. He pees in bags. Of course he's crazy. I, I don't. Yes, because I, his perfectionism refuses to let him leave the office, and so, I admire that. <laughs> I honestly give us, do. Give us a shout out and a comment in uh, wherever you're watching this, uh, whether it's social media, uh, you know, Twitter, Facebook, or or YouTube, or wherever you're watching or listening to this. On uh, should we do a ranking uh, episode of uh, from sane to batshit crazy? game developers you know should also, we do a tier list of that also, Nomura, also. uh you know uh Nomura and uh, uh shigeru miyamoto and uh wait a minute um, sakurai and the rest sakurai. of them I, um uh, takeshi beat takeshi oh god takeshi. <laughs> challenge <laughs> um also also that's um, troll tier yeah and um also, put in the comments down below, um, what is the fun random theory do you think about um, Nomura? Do you think about Nomura? Just because, like, what other crazy things do you think he does because he's a perfectionist? <laughs> All right, so uh, we're going to wrap in the up. Mirror with, every uh, day going, you are a failure. You have to do better. <laughs> uh, I, my, my personal theory is that when he looks at artwork, uh, especially something, even if it's something he drew... He will always disapprove and say that it needs more belts and more zippers. More belts. <laughs> more zippers. We, more belts. I thought we were talking about Rob Liefeld for a second. <laughs> no, no my, it's it's, my... it's kind of like that uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog moment with uh, when Muriel gets turned into a kid with the macaroni and cheese. <laughs> more cheese. More macaroni. More cheese. More macaroni. Less macaroni. More cheese. So... And then, like, I hate not, belts. <laughs> I hate macaroni and cheese. <laughs> like, that's literally like every Nomura character design. So, more belts, more zippers, more belts, more zippers, uh, less belts, more zippers, more belts, less zippers. Like, by the time you get done at, with it, you look at it and you go, I don't know where the belts and zippers end on this thing. Like, how do you even put this on? <laughs> Um, one of my personal fun theories is that uh, he looks at it, he, so they'll have just finished, like, a storyboarding <laughs> idea. Yep. He'll go through it, like, he'll stand in front of the whiteboard, everyone else is, like, you know, behind him, waiting for his approval, and he's like, okay, this makes sense, I understand it. Write it again! <laughs> I don't <laughs> understand this, what do you people not get? I, I swear that he probably just tells people, take what you wrote, and put them on magnets. And I will rearrange it on the uh, refrigerator tomorrow morning. <laughs> That's Nomura. If this somehow gets back to you, know that we have nothing but the utmost love and respect. But my God, dude, you take so long with games, and we appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, the, a true they perfectionist. Had to kick him off of fifteen, they literally had to kick him off of fifteen because yeah. they needed Kingdom Three to be worked on. Because they needed to do Final Fantasy VII Remake as well, which they also scrapped once in its entirety because the team that was working on it was from outside of Square and was apparently doing a subpar job, unfortunately. And then they're like, 
crud, we have to get Nomura back in to do this. <laughs> yeah. Um, that'll be another... Uh, leave us a comment if you want a episode on games in development hell. Uh, because there aren't enough stories about that as it is. And we like having a good laugh about shit like that. Um, oh, yeah. We'll wrap things up Absolutely. with uh, with the uh, blip of the uh, the blip of the whenever uh, bit of gaming news that just kind of went blip out of nowhere into uh, the uh, public eye. Uh, Borderlands has just announced that they have a director for the Borderlands movie that has been in development hell for the past five years, Eli Roth. Should I don't know who it, that is. I know who that is, but uh, should that should Borderlands become a movie? I mean, I know we're starting to make... It seems video game movies are already on a rise with Detective Pikachu and especially with recent Sonic the Hedgehog. Can Borderlands... Should we try and make that into a movie? Um, here's the thing, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. We already have. You want to know what it's called? Mad what? Max. <laughs> How did I know you were going to say Mad Max? I, I was I honestly kind of... to say Fury Road. I kind of thought that the same too. Um, I, I mean, again, leave it in the comments if you want us to do something about video game movies. But with the success of Detective Pikachu and Sonic, and the focus on uh, fans actually getting involved, uh, whether it was Detective Pikachu having one of the artists uh, being a professional fan artist who did renditions of realistic, uh, real life Pokemon. Uh, get pulled onto the project, or one of the character designers, uh, the, or the character designer that worked on Sonic Mania, working on the redesign of Sonic for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Um, I think we definitely are hitting kind of a new, kind of a new th synergy between fans and video game movies. Um, that it's not just putting out something Hollywood. It's now about putting out something that people will spend money on, especially because you can patch movies nowadays, as people have been oh, referring yeah. to it. So, um, Actually, may I close this out with some fun uh, gaming news of today in uh, gaming history? Uh, yeah, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, exactly 34 years ago today, on February 21st, 1986, Super Mario Brothers was out on the Famicom Disk System in Japan. And 27 years ago, um, Super Nintendo released Star Fox in Japan. Nice. Yeah. It's, uh, oh, I feel old. Yeah, yeah, but, I mean, to make you feel better, uh, 19 years ago in 2001, Clive Barker's Undying came out. I still feel old. <laughs> Fine, fine. More fine. recently, in 2019, Phoenix Rice Ace Attorney Trilogy came out for the Nintendo Switch in Japan. That still, still makes still me feel old because I played those on the, the, the DS. What do you want from me? <laughs> Stop making I me want feel my old. childhood back, damn it! <laughs> oh, but here's one Azura's Wrath came out eight years ago. Okay, I didn't I don't play feel that old. game. So that was that just a decent button pressing game. <laughs> I didn't play that, so that doesn't make this me entire feel group. <laughs> and I'm going to remind you guys of it one way or the other. Oh, I already have three people who remind me how old I am, including my own girlfriend. <laughs> so there you have it, folks. That is the latest in uh, random gaming news, as well as a little bit of gaming history and a heck of a lot about Sony. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to unpress pause and let you get back to whatever it is you're playing. Let us know in the comments what you're playing right now. Give us suggestions of what we should play. So we're always game because that's what we are. We're gamers here on Press Pause. Got I just any, gated uh... us. <laughs> <laughs> so at the time of recording, this is what was in the past. Yeah, well, you yeah. know what? It's still fun history. Somebody might yeah. win Jeopardy with that. And if you do win Jeopardy on that, just remember, you learned it here on Press Pause. Also, DM us for our P.O. Box because we would like our winnings that we are due. <laughs> Cha ching! <laughs> so, Let's go. Speaking of money, so before we go, huge shout out to our affiliates. So they mean the world to us because they help us out when you go ahead and check them out. Green Tea House, J List, 
and many others. So all the details are in our ads and in our social media. So if you're not following us, give us a follow, Super Fancom. So you can find us on Twitter and Facebook, along with all the other podcast platforms out there. So thank you for tuning in, and have a great time.